Welcome to this Lyric Land video with me, Mr. Linham, where today we're exploring the January blues. This is episode three, so if you're watching this video, you need to make sure that you've already watched videos one and video two. This will make us make it harder, so we've got don't clap this one back. I'm adding in never clap this one back. And of course, if you want to do more Don't Clap This One Back videos, they're all on my YouTube channel, or you can find them through lyricland.co.uk. And remember, green, easiest, blue, then yellow, and then the hardest are the red. I think there's 24 Don't Clap This One Back videos. and welcome to this Lyric Land video with me, Mr. Linham, where today we're working on the January Blues Project. This is episode four, so if you haven't seen episodes one, two and three, where have you been? What have you done? What are you doing? You need to get back and watch those first, otherwise none of this will make any sense whatsoever. So let's start off with a bit of a quiz. What can we remember about the blues? Firstly, number one, where does the blues come from? Tell me through the screen now. Yes, it does come from the United States of America. And who's famous for performing it? Well, loads of people are famous for performing it. Now, which styles of music come out of the blues? Can you name any? I'm listening. I'm listening, maybe you're just saying it through your mind. After the blues, we get jazz music is the right answer. You could have said rock music. You could have said rock and roll music too. And if you said pop music, well, that's the general term. You could have been more specific, couldn't you? If we had to describe what the blues is, what kind of things could we say the blues is? Tell me through the screen. I'm sure you're saying that the blues is a sound. <laughs> my favourite blues phrase, or blues lick, as jazz musicians call them. You could say the blues is a structure, because we've been looking at kind of a 12 bar blues structure, haven't we? Then finally, you could also say that the blues is, of course, a feeling. It's that combination of being happy and hopeful for the future, but being sad right now. It's almost like being in a lockdown. <laughs> that's a joke relevant to 2021. If you're watching this in 2027, that joke won't be funny anymore. Fingers crossed. Right, well, we're going to recap and sing my January blues song. And if you don't know it, go back to video episode one and we will learn that song together. But for now, let's sing the January blues. <laughs> sad, you have to pretend that you're happy, and if you're feeling really happy, you've got to pretend to be really emotional. <laughs> Acting. Alas, poor Yorick. I do entertain myself and no one else. Now, last week, we looked at some of the instruments that might play the blues, didn't we? And we looked at the differences between the orchestra and between a jazz band. We've also looked at rock and roll, haven't we, with Chuck Berry, and then later in the 80s with the Blues Brothers, and today, well, you know what? We're going to bring it straight into 2021 when this video was made, January of, and we are going to become blues musicians ourselves because we are going to write our own blueses. I'm going to sing to you and you're going to come up with a witty or clever response. So I'm going to say, tell me why you've got the blues. And then in that gap, you are going to Tell me why. Of course, what could be more obvious? If I go, tell me why you've got the blues. The dog has eaten my homework. Could be one, for example. Tell me why you've got the blues. I want to go outside. Could be one. Whatever it is, 
It could be, I've eaten my PlayStation. I don't know, but you've got to come up with it. So, bit of thinking music. You need to be thinking about what your response is going to be. <laughs> well, hopefully the countdown theme was not wasted upon you and you have come up with a blues response. What are you worried about? Or what do you want to pretend to be worried about? Which is always the fun one, I think. So, are you ready? Here we go. Tell me why you've got the blues. I think we'll have one more go though because I think you can be even more kind of sassy. I want some attitude coming through the screen. I want to feel it coming at me like a buzzard. You know? Okay, here we go. Tell me why you've got the blues. Tell me why you've got the blues. Tell me why you've got the blues. Hopefully you've done some really great work, but now there's a secondary challenge. If you want to, you can go off and write your own blues now. We know that it's a three line structure. Tell me why you've got the blues. Something, something, something. Tell me why you've got the blues. Something, something, something. And then you could even go into every single day, every single way, I've got the blues. And that's our structure. Or you can go completely free form and write your own blues any which way you like. And if you want to send them to me, fantastic, that's great. Send them to me through my Lyricland website or through Google Classroom if that's the way you would usually communicate with me. Because I'd love to hear the amazing blues compositions that you've been creating. I'm going to now play you a little repeating blues cycle for you to practice singing and writing your version with. I'm going to do three choruses. That means three lots of the structure we've been doing. Each time we've sung it, we've sung it just once. That's one chorus. I'm now going to put three in a row and you can practice messing around with musical ideas and improvise over the top because before we compose, we have to make something up. We have to improvise it. And then the act of composition is structuring that improvisation, isn't it? Here we go. Are you ready to improvise your blues? <laughs> it's exciting. A one, a two, a one, two, three, four. we go. So I made a mistake in there. Enjoy that. This is live. This is real. No edits. <laughs> I'm sure you've done amazingly there coming up with your blues. And if you haven't, you can always rewind this video. Try that jazzy thing over and over again and see if you can write your own blues. Express yourself with music because after all that's what I always think good music is a bit of self-expression. We're now going to move on to our listening project and I love my jingle so much that you're going to hear it now. If you've got ears on your head and your brain in between, you're ready for a little bit of listening. Ning, 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 listening. <laughs> that jingle. <laughs> Uh, yes. Our listening project for this week is Herbie Hancock. There he is. What a very fabulous man. And Herbie Hancock was around in the 1960s in jazz and was really at that kind of funky 1960s jazz era. And then in the 1970s, he really gets in to his funk grooves. And he is an incredible pianist. And I'm sure you can find lots more great music by him just by searching his name onto the YouTube. And you can really enjoy his work. So we're going to listen to a piece of music by him called Watermelon Man. 
and I've got three questions for you before you think about it. Number one, which instrument starts it off? Number two, what would we use to describe the sound of the groove? That's the way the music propels forward and it's kind of general flow. And number three, of course, is did we like it? Did we like it? You can find the link to Watermelon Man below in the screen. Can you see it down there? You need to click on that and open it as a new tab so you don't lose your spot in this video. So I will see you very, very shortly. But go and listen to Watermelon Man. I'll be waiting. <laughs> Oh, you took your time, didn't you? Welcome back. So, we listened to Watermelon Man. What instrument starts it off? That part. Well, what, what did I just play it on? It's a piano, isn't it? It's a piano. I'm sure you got that. Now, the, this was a harder question, actually. The kind of groove moving forward. How do we describe it? Well, I think it's got quite a lot of poke. So it's quite a fun, it's got a kind of energy, it's got a flow to it. We can use all sorts of describing words. It's a bit kind of sassy, isn't it? It's got a little bit of like, oh no you didn't, whatever that is. I don't know what that is. But it's really got a really good energy, hasn't it? Did you find it made you want to move? I should hope it gave you a kind of this kind of like shouldery arm thing because I think good music makes you want to move. All great music makes you want to move. It might not be the way that we typically move to music now because we don't move to classical music in the same way. We think of waltzes and tangos and things like that, but we do want to move to music. Music moves us both physically and emotionally. <laughs> Talking of emotions, how did you get on? Did you like it? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? You can let me know in the comments and email me and get in contact through the Lyric Land website, can't you? Lovely. I think it's great and that's why I've shared it with you. <laughs> now we need to move on to our favourite game. It's Don't Clap This One Back. Don't clap this one back. Don't clap this one back. We're going to do Don't Clap This One Back. We've got Don't Clap This One Back and we've got Never Clap. This one back. Make sure if your mum, dad, or great aunt Ruth is around, you get them involved with this and then laugh at them when you get it wrong because that's encouragement. <laughs> so, are you ready? Here we go. Never clap this one back. Don't clap this one back. Never clap this one back. Don't clap this one back. Don't clap this one back. Well, if you got all of those right, congratulations. You probably got to about the top of the green level and there are more Don't Clap This One Back videos either through the Lyric Land website, magically appearing below with the magic of the internet, or you can find them on my YouTube channel. If you're watching this video on YouTube, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you get more of my wonderful, entertaining content made especially for you. Yes, you out there, not Joe Blogs down the street, you. I hope you've had fun. I think we've done some amazing work exploring rhythm and blues and jazz and rock and roll. And we've done some composition. We've done some improvisation. We've done some singing. We've done all of the glorious things. And if you've got a piano at home or some kind of instrument, see if you can play over the top of the blues that I played for you earlier. See if you can make up your own blues. And remember, the good thing about jazz is Miles Davis once said this, don't fear mistakes because there are none. You can literally play anything. How glorious. Let's finish with a January blues. Are you ready? Our last one, the end of this project. Here we go. I've got the January blues. Got the January blues. I got the January blues. I got the January blues. Here we go. Every single day, every single way, I got the blues. Sing my line again. Every single day, every single day, I've got the blues. And one more time, every single day, every single way, I've got the blues. And that's the end 
of our lesson for now. Yeah! Bye, everybody. See you later. Goodbye.